Welcome to the Pediatric Advanced Life Support Chapter on PALS and Pediatric Assessment. Respiration is the process of transporting oxygen into the body's cells and tissues and removing carbon dioxide from the body. The respiratory and cardiovascular systems work closely together to properly exchange gases between cells and blood. When this collaborative process is disturbed, it can create life-threatening conditions that are very serious, especially for children. Such a disruption may cause hypoxemia, which is a low blood oxygen level, or hypercapnia, which is a high blood carbon dioxide level. If a child suffering from either of these conditions does not get proper attention, this may result in respiratory problems and failure. Because of this, it's crucial to recognize symptoms and signs of respiratory problems and shock in all ill or injured children. Recognition and prompt action may prevent cardiopulmonary failure and cardiac arrest. Cardiac arrest in infants and children usually results from continuous respiratory failure, shock, or both. Survival rate of these children is low. To prevent further damage, understanding and knowing the proper intervention and assessment is crucial. Pediatric Advanced Life Support, or PALS, is designed to provide a system for healthcare providers to assess and treat children in respiratory distress, respiratory failure or shock, and achieve the best possible outcome while preventing further deterioration or death. To treat a seriously ill or injured child, use the assess, categorize, decide, act model. The assessment approach has four stages. The first part of the evaluation process is the general assessment and it requires a quick visual and auditory assessment of the child. This involves looking for irregularities based on appearance, breathing, and circulation. A deficiency in any of these factors ought to signal an emergency and requires immediate attention and treatment. The second stage of the evaluation process is the primary assessment, which is activated after completing the general assessment. With the ABCDE approach, a thorough, hands-on, cardiopulmonary and neurological evaluation of the child is performed and vital signs and oxygen saturation are analyzed. Remember to look out for any life-threatening problems while assessing the patient so complications may be addressed immediately. Let's look at the ABCDE approach. A is for airway. Ensure that the patient's airway is open and unobstructed, maintained by regular methods of advanced intervention. Observe the chest movement and listen or feel if there is air moving through the mouth or nose. If there is abnormal, restricted, or no breathing, then an upper airway obstruction can be assumed. B is for breathing and is measured by airway and lung sounds, tidal volume or the amount of air moving in and out of the lungs, respiratory rate, respiratory effort, and pulse oximetry. Respiratory rate is defined as a number of breaths over a period of time. The same is true with both adults and children. There are different factors that may affect respiratory rate, such as fever, anxiety, pain, exercise, excitement, or any underlying medical conditions. For more information on the identification and comparison of normal and abnormal respiratory rates, respiratory effort, tidal volume, airway and lung sounds, and pulse oximetry in children, please refer to the corresponding chart in this chapter. The C of the ABCDE approach is for circulation, which includes cardiovascular and end organ function. Proper cardiovascular function can be assessed with the following skin color and temperature, heart rate, heart rhythm, blood pressure, central and peripheral pulses, capillary refill time. Proper end organ function is evaluated through mental status or brain perfusion, skin perfusion, renal perfusion, including urine output. For more information on the identification and comparison of normal and abnormal circulation in a child, please refer to the corresponding chart in this chapter. D is for disability, which is usually noticeable during or right after the general assessment. 
When a child presents no response or is unconscious, immediate attention must be given. E is for exposure. For special cases and emergencies, immediately check for signs of exposure so the child may receive specific care immediately. Signs may be the following. Hypothermia, massive bleeding, petechia, purpura, septic shock, distension of the abdomen. The third stage of the evaluation process is the secondary assessment. The goal of the secondary assessment is to obtain a more in-depth assessment of the patient's history as well as a thorough physical exam. The mnemonic SAMPLE or sample can be used to follow the evaluation procedures. S is for signs and symptoms which are indicated by the following. Problems breathing, altered consciousness, anxiety and agitation, fever, decrease in appetite, diarrhea and vomiting, and bleeding. Finding some or even one of these may indicate a problem. Before treatment is applied, consider A of the sample. A is for allergies and can be to food, medication, or an environmental allergy. Asking parents or guardians for possible allergies can help a PALS provider understand what medications could be provided and what treatments to avoid to make sure there are no complications that occur in the process of aiding the child's survival and recovery. M is for medications, so consider the time of the last dose. In instances when the child has already received medications prior to emergency care, it is important to know when the last dose was given to avoid any complications or counter reactions. P is for past medical history, including prior health history or other medical problems. Knowing the child's medical history and other medical problems makes it easier to select a course of treatment and understand the condition of the patient better. L is for last meal. As a PALS provider, you should find out the type and the time of the last liquid and solid food that the child consumed. This may help you determine if the food or drink has something to do with their current condition, as well as any interactions it can cause. Lastly, E is for events. Cause of illness or injury, treatment during onset of disease, estimated time of arrival. Finally, the fourth and final assessment is the tertiary assessment, which is focused on finding the problems related to the respiratory and circulatory systems. These are determined through both laboratory and non-laboratory examinations. Laboratory or blood tests show arterial blood gas, ABG, venous blood gas, VBG, and hemoglobin concentration. Non-laboratory studies include pulse oximetry, exhaled CO2 monitoring, capnography, chest x-rays, and peak expiratory flow rate. These assessments provide a more complete account to the healthcare worker when treating a child in an emergency situation. This was a section on PALS and pediatric assessment of our Pediatric Advanced Life Support course. Please proceed to the next section of this course and review the corresponding videos.